Okay, let's get started. First, I have a piece of paper ready to go. I have a pencil to start out. I have an eraser handy, uh, just in case I make a boo-boo. I have chalk pastels ready to go. You do not need to use chalk pastels. You could use colored pencils or crayons, or you could even use some sort of paint. We just basically want something that we are able to blend. So markers don't really work amazing unless you have a lot of tones in your marker kit. So I don't really recommend marker too, too much, but hey, you have what you have, and artists make do with what they can do. So here we go. With my pencil, I'm going to be Begin finding the middle part of my paper, scooching down about an inch, and from this point, I'm going to make a line that comes down and stops about two, three inches up from the paper. Okay? This is going to be my dragon's pupil, so get ready for that. Now I'm going to find the corner, the bottom left corner. And I'm going to zoom in towards the center of my paper about an inch or two. Not to be exact, though. We're just kind of eyeballing this. <laughs> eyeballing, we're drawing an eye. That's funny. So from this point, I'm going to actually draw this big curved line that ends up towards the opposite corner. So again, a big curved line. I like to practice that a couple times before I put it on paper. Oh, er. And I got this big old curved line here. Then the opposite way. And it looks like I got this big eye kind of floating around in here. So then I'm going to actually kind of mimic the line I just added. Scooge over. And above it, I'm going to add another big line, and mine's actually going to go off the paper. It might come back into view about there. And then I'm going to do the same thing underneath it. Okay, so my eye is pretty much taking up majority of the paper. So I've got some of these spaces in here. I've got this space that I'm going to add some detail to in a moment. So you guys, we're going to talk about dragon scales. So you can actually pick your own shape of your dragon scale. You could make your scales a bit more rounded of a rectangle or a square. That could be a dragon scale for you. You could do the curved dragon scale. You could make them a little bit more circular. Okay, it's kind of up to you which kind of dragon scale you want. <clears throat> but what we're going to start with is in between these two lines, we're going to start to add some dragon scales, and we don't want to make them too teeny, okay? So I'm going to begin filling in some dragon scales, and I chose the rounded rectangular ones. So I'm filling this space in with my dragon scale. And if your eye isn't taking up a lot of the paper like mine is, then you'll just add some more dragon scales. Uh, no problem. And then I'm going to go to the bottom area. At some point during this video, when we get the idea, I'm going to actually fast forward as I start to draw. So you might actually see me going super fast at some point in time, but it's not actually that I'm going that fast. It's just that I have sped up the video. Because once you get the hang of it, it becomes pretty easy squeezy. Easy squeezy, lemon peasy. This might go off. Okay. So I've got my two layers of scales. And I've got odd areas like this that I'm going to kind of fill in almost like a triangular, this one's going to be weird, shaped scale. And then we have these areas that are coming off. 
So if you actually want to imagine them in rows almost, like we just did some rows, they would kind of follow the flow of where your dragon scales are going. So they should have some sort of direction. They shouldn't just be randomly placed. So currently, I have mine all set and ready. Whoops, I forgot the side. To add some tone. We're actually going to start in the eyeball. So here's the thing. When we start to add some sort of tone, we want to think of different groups of colors here. So whatever color scheme you chose for your eye, your eyeball, you should choose opposite for your scales. Okay? And actually, wait, I forgot one thing. In my eye, I'm going to add this little rounded line to the corner. Rounded line here. Okay, there we go. Now, I think what I'm going to do first, though, before I choose my color scheme, is I'm going to begin to add things in black. Okay, so I have chosen a black, and remember, mine is chalk pastel. If you choose oil pastel or chalk pastel, just remember that this color moves around. This uh, material can spread. So you might want to be careful of that because if you drag your arm through it, you will smear the whole thing, okay? So be careful. So whatever I add, and these are a little bit tricky because they're not a point when I draw with them. I'm actually gonna get to this pupil, make it wide. Okay. Now, I'm going to begin tracing the lines I already have. And again, with this point, be careful with put where you put your arm depending on what you're using. So, next step, trace your pencil lines. And here I'm going to go into warp speed to show you this. And go! start to do is choose my color scheme for my eyeball okay so we can choose between these two color schemes so if you actually look at a color wheel it can be broken up into two groups of warm and cool colors warm colors are made up of mostly reds and oranges and yellows cool colors have a lot of blue based into them so green you have lots of blue in green and in purple you have blue so it makes it more cool so I'm going to choose a warm color scheme for my eyeball. So I'm going to choose a red, an orange, and a yellow for my eyeball. I want my eyeball to be warm. Okay? So you choose your color scheme. All right? Warm or cool. And if you are choosing to use some of that chalk pastel, it's always handy to have some sort of tissue by you so that you can wipe your dirty, dirty hands. And I want you to pay attention to how I am holding my paper when I turn it around. I call it my claw hand. I hold it like this at my fingertips because if I put my arm on it and move it, again, 
it's going to smear. So in case you're using something smearable, make sure you are ready and you're holding it correctly or else you're going to come up with a gigantic mess. <clears throat> okay, so now that I have my color scheme, I'm going to start with the lightest color towards my pupil. Okay, so what I'm going to do first, oops, I'm just way too strong, you guys, I just break all my materials. I'm going to color from my pupil outwards. I'm going to fill it in with my yellow tone, my light tone. So if you're using a cool color, green would probably be one of your lighter tones. Then I switch to one of my mid-tones, which I've got some orange, and I'm not going to actually swoop in towards the top, swoop in towards the bottom. So none of this is blended right now, so it's always going to look a little funky until it gets blended. Okay, and I'm not getting quite to the black line, so I'm leaving little gaps here and there just because when I get to the black, black overpowers things a lot, so I'm trying to give it some space. Too strong, way too strong, you guys. Way too strong. So my red is actually going to swoop in around some of the orange a little bit. Okay. I did forget one thing on the other side. My other side is blank. I switched to my pencil. I'm actually going to have this big mark in here. And that's going to be my shine mark. Okay, so in that mark, I'm not going to do anything. All right, so I got my shine mark all set. Now here's the part where we got to be extra careful. I don't want to get it into the black too, too much. Okay, so what I do is I take a finger, just one. You really don't want to overpower it too much. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to go to the light area first. And all I do is kind of work in a circular way. So I'm taking my finger and I'm working in circular. And what I'm trying to do is cover up some of the areas I may have missed. I get close-ish to the black. Woohoo! Cloud of dust. That's another thing when you're working with pastels. If it's a chalk pastel, you're going to get it all over the place, so be careful. Okay? So I'm moving it around. I got a little bit of black in there, so I wipe my finger off. I'm going to take... Get orange blended with itself first. And then I take the red, I blend the red in. So again, I'm just trying to get any of the areas I may have missed. Okay. Now, what we want to do is we actually want to blend the yellow into the orange and the red into the orange. Okay. So we want these colors to blend together. So what I tend to do is in between two, I tend to do the circle. So it starts to blend together. And then I go into the red, into the orange. So if you have colored pencil, this would be a little bit different. If you had oil pastels instead of chalk pastels, this would look a little bit different, but you would still use that same circular motion. If you're using colored past, no, if you're using, sorry, if you're, you are using colored pencil, what you'd want to do is you would want to start with your yellow tone and I am putting pressure down on this colored pencil. I see kids doing this a lot. You can barely see that color. So make sure you're pushing down on your pencils. Orange. Red. Okay, so if you look at this, this is not blended together at all. Okay, so you can see a difference between each color tone. We want to get rid of that difference. So I tend to take my darker color 
and I overlap it into my lighter color, but I'm not pushing as hard. I'm actually going a lot lighter now. And then what I do is I switch and I overlap and I'm pushing harder with my lighter tone. Sometimes I switch back and forth several times. Just trying to get that line to fade a little bit. Okay. So I go back and forth a lot. Then orange into yellow. Light. I'm going really light through here. I feel like oil pastels and chalk pastels are way easier to blend. It's a lot about swirling the stuff around to mix together, but colored pastels, what? No, colored pencils. Why do I keep saying that? Anyways, colored pencils and crayons get a lot trickier to blend. Because a lot of it is paying attention to the pressure you're putting down on something. Okay, so that looks much better now. It's starting to blend. I do have some more work to do in between, but I just want you to pay attention to how much I switch back and forth and how dark my tone is. Again, if you're coloring and you're barely pushing down, your color is not very rich. It doesn't pop very well. So you really want to put pressure on that. Okay? All right, so back to my eyeball. I'm not done with this side yet, but I want to wait a moment because I would like to get this side set before I blend everything into the black. Okay? So again, with that little spot that I just drew, I don't want to color over it. So make sure you're leaving it alone. Yellow is first, or your lighter tone. Then orange. Try not to push super hard if you're using oil or chalk pastel because then you're wasting a lot and you're not trying to color it perfectly with chalk or oil. Okay, so I do have lots of spots sticking out. Just because you don't want to color it perfectly because it moves around so you can cover up any of the spots you miss. start to blend. First blend each one separate. I have a little bit of pencil mark showing, so I'm going to try to disguise that a little bit. Hopefully it works out. Or this part is not going to work out too, too well with the yellow. Okay. Now I'm going to start to blend the colors together. And if yours isn't blending too well, you might need to add extra tone down. So sometimes I might need more extra material so that these blend together a bit more. Okay. All right. All right. So now that I have this part of my eye done, I'm going to begin with the outer area of my eye. So I have this like white area around it. 
So I'm actually going to take the black and blend the black in slightly, which will give my eye a little bit of shadow around the edge. Like in this part, and I do change fingers once in a while because they get dirty. <laughs> okay, blend in. And then I wipe my finger and I might go along that layer, soften it up a little bit. Switching my finger here. Okay. Now I'm going to try something. It might not work out, so be careful. I'm going to blend my pupil in. And I'm going to have it kind of come out just a little bit into my yellow. Whenever you get black into yellow, black and yellow kind of look funky. Okay, and then last but not least, I am going to take my black one more time. And I'm going to make this pupil a little bit bigger and a little bit pointier. It's the bottom. Alright. Ta da! Okay. So here's my eyeball. I'm a dragon. I'm going to get you. Okay. So, anyways, <laughs> now I'm going to begin my scales. So, if I used warm for my eye, I'm going to switch to a cool color scheme for my scales. So if you started cool, switch to warm. All right, let's see. I got lots of tones I can choose from. I'm gonna choose this blue. I'm gonna get a dark gray, gray, green. I knew that. And I don't know if I wanna go purple. I think I wanna have a mid-tone green too. I'm gonna stick with these, these are cool. Okay. So, before I do that, I will say, these little areas of the eye, Okay, I'm just going to get it a little grayish, so if you have gray, just shade in here a little bit. I'm going to add some green to it in a second. These are the corners of the eye, add a little bit of green to it, those would be pretty dark areas. Okay. Scale time. Mm -hmm. You know what? I think I'm actually going to choose three tones of green. Keep going back and forth just because it will make blending it so much easier. So I've chosen a really dark green, a medium green, and a light green. So if you're like, I'm going to do blue, maybe three different blues. So really light blue, a medium blue, and a dark blue. Or with blue, you could do light blue. You could do like a light blue, you could do a dark blue, and you could do a purple. Really easy, okay? So it's kind of up to you here. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to show you one scale, and then I'm going to fast forward, because what I do to one, I do to all. So if I color light first, medium, I broke it again! Too strong! And I do dark around the edge. And then I'm going to blend light, medium, dark. Okay. I think I'm actually going to apply all of my color first. And then I'm going to blend it later. So when I zoom, I'm actually going to do all of my coloring first. And then you're going to see me like warp speed. Okay. So, here we go.
got my dragon eye and my scales all set. I am going to work back into my dragon eye a little bit because you can see some of my fingerprints. My hands are dirty. So I'm going to wipe my hands pretty well. I'm going to softly blend those little areas in so they're not as noticeable. And then I'm going to take a white. And in my shine spot, I'm going to give it way more of a white area. More of a glow. And I'm going to call my dragon eye done. I'm a dragon, I'm going to get you. So one thing you should do if you use chalk pastels like I did, you should spray or have a parent spray your picture with hairspray. It's a fixative. What a fixative does is it holds that dust down because it will still be dusty later. Okay? So nobody wants to track dust everywhere. It's really irritating and it's not the easiest thing to clean up. So I am going to spray mine so that it doesn't constantly get dust everywhere. And I already have dust everywhere. So, my bad. But anyways, so you will want to spray this. If you used oil pastel, I typically don't do anything to treat oil pastel. I know there are some things and some people believe that you should treat the oil pastel because it will move around if you touch it and move it. So that means if you're putting pressure on it and dragging it around, it will probably move. But generally, I just don't touch it when I'm done. So I don't see an issue with that. I don't usually do anything to fix it. If you use color pencil or crayon, you don't need to do anything to that. That's golden. So, Dragon Eye, woohoo, we did it. Good job, everybody. See you later.